I'm turning tonight, I'll let you guys pass them around. These, this is one of the shells. I broke this one. If you look, if you look through them, you can see they're kind of perforated, like uh, almost like a tablet pad. You can see light through them, so they're pretty delicate. I'm real, real chintzy with my wood, so when I round these off, I cut my tenons to the inside, and I leave the center point out here, so when I put them on the lathe, I can kind of center them a little bit. I don't have any wood to spare on these if I want them to, uh, to fit the holes, because the holes in the top of these are really quite big. The bottom hole isn't too bad. The top hole I've learned to leave alone. You'll see when, when that one comes around why. The bottom kind of starts out like this. I don't kind of starts out like this. I don't know if you can see it. Vicki tried to wash this sneeze guard, but it didn't come very clean. I just use a little reamer, or you can use a drill bit and a drill press but you just have to be real delicate and, and ream it out real slow. Uh-huh. I'm passing one around. Okay, somebody wanted to know where I got the shells and how much they cost. I got these from Craft Supply, and mine cost me about $2,000 because I, I flew out there to get them. So... <laughs> And I, I spent a fair amount of money while I was out there, so. These, were, these particular ones were real pricey, but I think normally you get a, a set of three for $10. I'm not positive, but it's, it's somewhere around there. And they come in three different sizes. There's a small and a medium, and then a slightly larger size. Anyway, I'm going to start turning this because I think Anthony's going to use this lathe when I get through. And I figure since I'm turning something so delicate, I should bring some big tools. <laughs> uh, I have a little tool here that I use for ornaments. You could probably make make one or... It's kind of like a memory stick. It has uh, two different sizes here, and I just use that like my calipers. It's just easier than adjusting my calipers every time. And I have a little ruler here for the length of the uh, icicle. I start out with a little one and then get bigger. This one, I, I've got four icicles on, and I just progressively get larger. So it's kind of easier to mark it with this. Uh, I bought this from John Shackelford four years ago, I guess. A little longer than four years ago. Pete Stiglich is the one that made these, though. I kind of adjust these just depending on what size ornament I'm going to turn. I think uh, the proportion of the ornament is, is probably more important than anything. I think I'm going to make this one. I also allow for this hole that I'm going to have to cut off of here. This isn't an exact science, it's just kind of a, a guessing game. And I'm not happy with where I made those because I think I'm going to make a really small ornament, so I'm going to redo that. Now if I can just tell which lines to use.
At home, I have a slightly smaller, I brought my tool rest, but I have a slightly smaller one that I use at home. Close counts here, it doesn't have to be perfect. I like to get this as close as I possibly can. And I try to get it positioned so that I can get my fingers back here. And I don't ever get my finger in there, hopefully. And the main thing with this is just to be patient and take it down a little at a time. I have a set of Bonnie Klein tools that I use for a lot of this because actually this handle is too long. It hits my stomach, maybe my stomach's too big. make sure I have that little dimple cut off of here that I made with the tail stock. This is blood wood. Is something that you're allergic to, Frank? Frank won't have to sweep up tonight. I think I should have sharpened my tool a little bit. I 
there's kind of a fine line between getting this too, too sharp and not sharp enough on the end. I have had them way too sharp where I've actually stuck myself with them. Normally I try to keep my piece of wood anywhere from six to eight inches. Uh, six inch piece is what I'm using here and I'm still getting a little bit of vibration. I'm gonna go ahead and sand this while I still have some wood to hold it. This is 320 grit right here that I'm using and I kind of back it up with my thumb. I didn't want to bring a lot of sandpaper so I just brought 320 and 400. If I'm doing a really long one, I go ahead and put finish on as I go, but I, yeah, I might ought to anyway. You really shouldn't go back on these, especially if you're doing one that's, that's longer than two. You will go back, but you shouldn't. I go back occasionally, and occasionally they break. Sometimes it's just too tempting not to. That's sanding sealer, and then I put a coat of Qualisol on them. I've also used Spray Deft, and that works just as well. Afraid I'm going to fall off my high chair over here. This little section here is probably one of the harder parts, just trying to get this tip without messing up the top of this.
this hole is is real fragile, so you're better off with a uh, tenon that's a s slightly too small rather than too big. Normally, I make them fit pretty tight, but you can't you can't force these at all. I usually, when I measure something, leave a little fudge factor because I always cut things too small, but in this case, I can't afford to do that or else it will split the, the shell out. Since this comes to a point, I really can't have a lot of overhang on this. I uh, concave the uh, icicle, but I still don't want too much overhang on this or it will kind of stand out from the ornament. So I just need to get this a little bit smaller. This is a parting tool, and I sharpen these with just a slight angle on them so that I can cut back in and concave this portion. It makes it just a little bit easier to cut back in there. This is a little set of Bonnie Klein tools that I got a long time ago, and they work pretty well for this. Pardon me? Skew. Ah, sorry. Just a skew, and I'm just gradually taking that back till I have a relatively clean line. And then I'm doing the same thing here. I'm doing some of this before I get my tenon cut because this is going to be a really small tenon. I still have quite a bit of room to work with here, so. Okay, I'm back to my parting tool now. Actually, that's awfully small. Before I get too, too much smaller, I'm going to go ahead and sand this and put some finish on it. If I don't, I may just sand it right off of here. And really, you should always kind of back this up with your finger. You can hear how thin that is. It's already vibrating. Pardon me? Well, this one's a three-eighths. I think this one's probably a quarter. This one may be slightly smaller. A long time ago, I just bought that Bonnie Klein set. 
and it pretty much had everything in it that I needed. I started making slightly shorter finials for these because I, I honestly think proportionately that's a little too long. It just doesn't, doesn't look right to me. This is just a piece of that Scotch-Brite. Paper towel works fine for this. Seventeen thirty six. It doesn't seem to uh, make a whole lot of difference. I really should turn it down when I sand so that I don't burn the wood, but I generally don't on something this small. I just buff it a little bit after that dries. I start back at this end and work my way up. And that's probably just the opposite of what I should do, but that's how I do it. I'm making a one of the really super small ones this time, so it's... bit tight but I'm pretty close like I said I'd rather this be a hair too small than to be too big okay This will fit in here just like this. Um, I use CA glue and I use like a medium or a thick. Actually, I have some flexible CA that I've been using. And uh, the thicker stuff doesn't seem to squirt very easy. So I just put it on a toothpick and kind of put it around here. And on normal wooden ornaments, I should have brought a ball with me. A lot of the sticking power is around the tenon, but on this, I had to, uh, I have to rely on this little cup right here to hold it in the surface. Some people file down the nubs on here, but I have not. I, it's just too tedious, and I'm, I'm too afraid of breaking them, so I just leave the nubs and put enough glue that that sets right in there. Uh, normally, I glue the top piece in first. And the reason for that is because I have the hook in the top and it's handling most of the weight. So I glue the top piece in first and spray a little uh, accelerator in through the bottom hole. And sometimes I put in an extra drop or two. Okay, I'm going to cut a top for that.
These really go pretty quick once you get set up for them. The hooks that I use in the top, I was using a, a fishing hook, but lately I've been using these little, uh, can't see those either. These are for jewelry. Hobby Lobby or anybody has them. They're, they're already made and you don't have to cut the uh, pointy part off. I'm going to make a little divot in the top of this so I can drill a, a very small hole for that hook. I'll pass this around. This, this is a number 61 bit. And of course there's not one in here. But anyway, it's a, it's a number 61 bit. If if you're interested in knowing what size, it's a pretty fine little bit. And I just have it in a pin vise. And you have to pull it out about every fourth inch or less and clean it or else it gets hot and breaks in there. Oh, yes. And this wood's pretty waxy. And I go ahead and drill the hole the full length of this bit. And the reason for that is so I don't have to worry about how long my hook is. And this normally leaves a little bitty hole clear out on the tenon. So if I do feel like the hook isn't going to hold or if it's a heavier ornament that I'm making, I can put some glue on the inside and it runs into the hook from the inside too. Pardon me? If it was a long enough hook, I could. You know this is messing up my manicure. This wood's really waxy. I've been turning some of the diamond wood and it doesn't take nearly this long to get through it. I should turn this off so I don't embarrass myself. I'm going to go ahead and take this down to a pretty good point now. And I probably use my parting tool more than most people, but it really saves me from getting a lot of catches. And it helps me take away a lot of wood in a hurry.
hoping I didn't take this down too far. Nope, I'm still good. I'm back to my uh, skew. And I just kind of sneak up on this. Looks like I have quite a bit of overhang, and I don't want a lot of overhang, so I think what I have here might work. I may take just a hair more off. One last cut. That's just a hair tight, so I'm going to skim it down a little bit, and I'm going to concave this. I think I better go back and take a little more off of that, huh? Well, I hope I have a lot of extra. Yeah, I should be okay. It's going to be close. I better sand this before I end up with it in pieces. parts that I cut with a skew, I really don't do much sanding on it. Kind of cuts clean enough that I really don't need it a lot. I hate throwing this stuff out in the trash. I know people think I cut myself all the time probably when they see this. Well, if this still fits the shell, it may be a miracle after I got that catch. But what I do with the ones that don't fit is I save them, like those that I handed around to you, and every now and then I, I turn a ball and I just make it fit ones I already have. So I recycle them. Oh yeah, I think that'll work. 
kind of important to make sure you have these centered. These things are so irregular, uh, the shells, that if you aren't careful when you glue them in, they look lopsided. And you can adjust those when you glue them if you are real careful. And normally, if you have any trouble getting the hook to go in, I just take a straight pin, a large straight pin. This one's going to go in fine, though. And stick it in there. I'm not going to glue this one because I didn't bring any glue. And it's going to look just about like those, hopefully. <laughs> 